Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. So guys, it feels great to be back this week after uh, a few weeks off, Pat. And, uh, you know, we also got to say congratulations to you because uh, one of those weekends you actually got married. So congrats. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate the picture too. If you didn't uh, catch it on Instagram. So uh, shout out to Austin for that. And yeah, it was a great time to just kind of, you know, enjoy the moment there, relax and, you know, with all friends and obviously being socially distanced, safe, all outdoors. But it was nice to see Austin in person. Uh, you know, so you know, it was certainly uh, instead of filming in, in virtual, uh, you know, hangouts. So that that was that was great. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we didn't have any time to film an episode. So, you know, it was very, very crazy, uh, quick paced weekend. So, uh, no, it was fun. It was, it was a great time. Thanks for thanks for having me down there. Anytime, bro. anytime. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, before we get started today, too, we also want to take a uh, you know, take a moment to uh, send our well wishes to the guys over at uh, the Total Soccer Show, uh, especially Daryl Grove. If you don't know, um, just got some some bad news that, uh, you know, his cancer is uh, progressing further. So we want to just take a moment um, and kind of, you know, again, send our well wishes to them. They've been a big part of kind of getting us into uh, doing this YouTube show and, and, and kind of uh, creating this this brand of young Americans abroad and and promoting you know uh, American soccer um, to the public and the community. So uh, yeah, Pat, it's just you know horrible news and definitely want to um, yeah just just give our um, yeah like I said well wishes and and hope things can turn around here and and Daryl can uh, yeah just get better and and keep you know keep in there keep some hope and uh, keep fighting. Yep. Yeah. And that's exactly all you can do. Just, just keep fighting and staying strong. And yeah, they've, you know, both Daryl and Taylor have done so much uh, in terms of total soccer show for inspiring us. Um, you know, like you mentioned, I remember listening to them and even throughout, um, you know, our time here and, and just, uh, yeah. yeah, always listening to them and just, you know, seeing everything, the reactions and, and positive, uh, you know, well wishes throughout the soccer community on social media just shows the reach and impact um, that they've made, um, you know, with this sport here in the country. Yeah, very true. They've, they've, you know, grown a wide, wide net or uh, cast a wide net, grown a wide web. So um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, a tremendous accomplishment what they've done. And uh, we hope their, you know, story continues no matter what the future holds. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's all we can really say. So, so getting into our episode today, Pat, what do we want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, the unofficial leader, you could say, of the YAH movement, Austin, uh, returns to the starting lineup after a long recovery from injury day. That's right. And we also have some more steady performances from our YAHs over in Germany. And uh, more just overall last-minute transfers that we need to get cover for you guys and get the news out is a lot more YAHs, uh, you know, inbound here for this season. So all that and more in this week's episode. All right, guys, and to start off, we're heading over to the Prem and talking about Christian Pulisic, that uh, unofficial leader of the YAH movement, Austin, in my opinion. So, right. you know, it was it was really great just to see him, you know, get back in action with his first start for Chelsea um, since he got injured August 1st in the FA Cup final. Um, you know, we even through that, his performance there and that, just the way he went down, you know, I know we don't want to relive that, but uh, you know, it's just awesome to see him with a few injury setbacks, finally come back and, and really, you know, play, you know, almost almost the full 90 there and, and get that start. So, unfortunately, Chelsea did um, end up tying 3-3 um, to Southampton. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to highlight Christian's performance, just starting the first half, too, here, um, you know, guys. So, again, he looked pretty dynamic and lively along with that front five. And, and you can see uh, Werner had an excellent turn and, and, you know, for some goals there to start. Um, you know, could have had a hat trick almost. And, and Havertz, you know, looked fantastic as well. And, and they were completely dominating um, from what I was watching there in the first half. Um, I thought it was going to be a runaway, you know, one of those six or seven goal games that we saw in the previous weeks before the international break, um, right. unfortunately. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, yeah, Christian looked pretty lively, had a nutmeg, I believe, and, and you know, had some some good passes and, and you know, breaking the lines there. But I would say the the limelight was more focused on that, um, you know, the German duo there, um, you know, Havertz and, and uh, you know, obviously Team Werner, who, you know, looked unbelievable. So great sign there in the second half. Um, again, had a, had a really, you know, good start to the second half where he made a, a, you know, had a good touch, made a great run, bursting past some players down the right flank there, um, kind of drifted essentially, but played a, a nice ball to, a, you know, drifting out wide Werner, who, again, in turn was kind of outside, I think he was inside the 18 there, and he slid it across on the ground, a nice ball, um, easily teed up for Havertz, um, you know, for his first uh, league goal, so it was a really good combination. That was a huge highlight that Christian kind of was involved in that goal. I think that made the lead 3-2 there, Austin. But, yeah, after that, Chelsea, um, you know, just there was a lot of holes in their defense, and, and the game kind of got away from them. And you kind of see some of their other players getting a little fatigued. And Christian was, I, I don't want to say disappeared, but not as influential, I think, is better in the last 20 or, or 30 minutes that he played. Um, yeah, they attacking, you know, they looked great, but – Man, some of those holes in the back and, you know, from center backs to keepers, they made some pretty pretty bad mistakes in that game where, you know, in a league this competitive, you can't let points slip away. So I want to get your thoughts on uh, Christian's performance there. Yeah, it was a pretty good performance from what I saw. I wasn't able to watch it live um, and just kind of saw some of the highlights. And, yeah, like you said, he looked lively, very dynamic. And, you know, this is his first game back from from the summer. So, uh, I thought that was great. And then uh, the other thing, I don't think you touched on it, Pat, but he, he started on the right in this game. That's um, right. He was starting on the left last year for for pretty much the entire restart um, and was doing really well on the left. So, you know, I think that that comes from, uh, you know, the players you referenced, Pat. Uh, Chelsea have a lot more options this year. Um, and and Christian's a very flexible player. So, you know, we might be able, might be seeing him more on the right this year. Uh, so personally, I'm, I'm, you know, excited or at least interested to see how that goes because um, you really made a killing last year off those back post runs and and kind of getting into the box, uh, you know, at the end of uh, crosses and things like that. So I'm curious to see Pat if you can do that on the right this year as well. Yeah, I'm very curious as well, and that's a good point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yeah, because obviously, uh, you know, Mount was there. Um, you know, before he got uh, subbed off there for, I think it was the Yak, right, that, that came on? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. I believe exactly. it was. So it's kind of a bit of a shift there at the end. And then obviously, uh, you know, some other departures here. But yeah, nonetheless, it, it'll be interesting to see how he does there on the flank. And I was watching his movements too, and, you know, had some great build up plays. But, it, you know, it's, it's interesting too, because with Werner just being a poacher and Havertz really finding himself in there too, I saw a few moments where they were kind of. I don't even want to say running into each other, but, you know, very close together um, yeah. at a certain times. So, you know, there's a lot of dynamic attacking power, which is really exciting, <laughs> but almost makes me think, will Christian have, you know, a high goal? And I don't want to say it's so early, but, you know, the, the goals and assist output you know, that you know, a lot of people are expecting, just with all the firepower they have now. Yeah, and, I, you know, he finished last year with, uh, I think it was 11 and 10 in all competitions. Uh, I'm I'm pretty good around there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was for his first season in the prem and, and in England, I thought that was great. Uh, like you said, I, I don't know if we'll see that again this year. Um, so yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how all these attacking players gel and how that playing time gets distributed because, you know, Frank loves Mason Mount. He loves him. Some he does. <laughs> and you got, you know, really talented players like Havertz, Werner, and even Ziyech is, in my opinion, maybe even the best player out of that group right now at this moment. So, uh, yeah, it, you know, we'll, we'll see what the output's like. But, uh, yeah, it's a good point to bring up. I'm just keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah, not, not too much more to add. You know, I think just keep an eye. And, and again, he's, he's just coming back to and is really his first start again since that injury. And, I think we just have to be a little patient and, and you know make sure we don't rush anything. I know uh, obviously we're filming here on Monday and they have that Champions League coming up, Boston. So it'll be kind of interesting to see. I know you know you, you had a certain prediction of you know starting around the bench there for Christian. Yeah, you know personally, I don't think Frank's going to roll the dice with him uh, this early, especially coming back from that long injury. So I think right. I think he's going to probably start on the bench for this game. Um, I, I think they play Sevilla, right, Pat? Yes. That'll be an interesting game. So, 
yeah, it should be a tough game for them. And, and hopefully, you know, if he's not in the starting lineup, he can come in off the bench later on in the game and provide a spark similar to like that, that Liverpool game um, or even some of their Champions League games last year where, uh, you know, he came off the bench and, and really was a difference maker for Chelsea. So, right. yeah, yeah, that's what, – what do you think? Do you think he'll start? Yeah, I think uh, – I'm in agreement with you. I think he'll be on the bench there just, just to play it safe. Um, you know, Frank did give him the number 10 and, you know, as mentioned over time, you know, yeah. it's, it's a player that, you know, has that such speed and, you know, ability to shift gears where, you know, you want to be really careful with the injury that he just had. Um, and, and I did like that that Liverpool reference that you threw, and he, he torched us. I remember seeing that, and I couldn't even be mad, um, you know, as a, a you know a Yaw fan here in, in the American movement over in Europe. So, yeah, I mean, just overall, um, Austin, I think, uh, yeah, just something to monitor and, and see kind of how Chelsea does because their offense is so good, but their defense is atrocious. So that's a balance. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it's always uh... – yeah, it's always going to be interesting this year, seeing how much money they spend on that that front line. And uh, yeah, they got old man Thiago Silva and Ben Chilwell, who's pretty much a, another attacking left back. So yeah. yeah. But with that being said, we're going to move over to Germany and talk about another young, exciting prospect, and that's Gio Reyna. So Gio Reyna started and played 90 minutes for BBB in their 1-0 win over Hoffenheim um, this weekend. So it was another really professional performance uh, from Gio, Pat. Uh, you know, there really wasn't too much to note in this game from him. Um, you know, uh, Dorman didn't really have their way for most of the day, uh, but he did provide a really good, uh, I guess you'd call it like a headed through ball to, to Erling Holland um, that really, you know, set Erland up to assist Marco Royce on the only goal for the day. Um, so it was good to see Gio play a part in that goal and, and be um, somewhat of a difference maker um, in that regard. And yeah, I just think, you know, Pat, overall, just seeing Gio get off to such a quick start with with Dortmund this year, I think is the biggest thing. Um, you know, I think I saw a graphic somewhere that Gio's played 94% of the minutes for Dortmund this season um, in all competitions. So, you know, that's that's a pretty good number and that, that leads the Dortmund team as well. So you know, I don't think we could have asked for anything more coming into the season uh, when looking at, at Gio at the start of the yeah. season. Yeah, you really couldn't ask for anything more. He is developing really, really nicely, um, you know, at Dortmund, um, you know, you know, following that Pulisic track and, and really just, again, just, you know, if it's not having, you know, all these goals and assists here and, you know, had such a hot start, but still putting in great performances, you know, I think just even – you know, making an impact on that goal. And like you said, just getting accumulating these minutes, especially, you know, in such a high top level league with a top level team, I think is just going to really benefit him down the run because, you know, you even see now rumors of Madrid tracking his progress. I know that's yeah. a whole other story there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's very true. And that's how it started with Pulisic too. You know, Pulisic didn't uh, contribute too many goals right at the start of his career or, or assists, um, but always was just getting minutes, honing his game, taking players on. And, you, you know, you see the dividends it's paying now where he really looks like uh, he's growing into a very complete player um, in terms of, you know, just being comfortable dribbling at players and, and you know, getting into the box and scoring, things like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, the same question that we posed for Pulisic, I'm going to pose back to you, Pat, now for Reyna. So do you think Gio will start for Dortmund in their uh, Champions League game against Lazio tomorrow uh, at Lazio? Ooh, you know, that, that's a tough prediction, Austin. Um, honestly, I know we were talking about it a little bit before, but I'm going to be a little bit optimistic and you know, shift gears okay. here and go with a you know, surprising here, yes. Um, okay. again, I, I'm not saying, <laughs> I guess I am saying it, but more of like an 75% yes. Um, you know, I think, I think he still has a good shot. I, again, it would be more maybe, uh, 65, 70 minutes. I also wouldn't be surprised to see him come off the bench, but I'm just going to be an optimist here and hope that he gets the start. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I, I'm going to say the, the opposite though. And I think, I think he'll start this game on the bench, but, uh, if he does start, that would be. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like since he played 90 minutes and Holland and Royce came off the bench in that game, they're kind of, uh, you know, 
resting certain players to start them for for the Champions League game. But uh, that's yeah. a good point. That's a good indicator there, actually. But but like you you know like we said earlier, uh, Pat, you know he's played ninety four percent of Dortmund's minutes this season. So you know he could be that that player that uh, you know Lucien Favre thinks is essential to being on the field. So. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. You know, like you said, for Pulisic, we're recording on a Monday, so unfortunately we won't be able to cover those games this week. But uh, yeah, here's to hoping Gio can uh, at least you know see the field for this game at the very least. So yeah, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Pat. Yeah, and and just uh, just you know all these these Champions League games that we're talking about, and these players involved. Uh, there's a there's a good substantial list now, so great problems to have here. Um, you know, for the odds. Very true. But yeah, I guess, uh, you know, shifting some exciting news here, um, Austin, with uh, Serginho Dest um, in Barcelona. So yeah, again, um, you know, he's the first American in, in club history here for Barca uh, to play in the starting lineup here in La Liga. So um, I think that's just an awesome accomplishment. You're really excited to just kind of see where he goes from there. Um, obviously, unfortunate, you know, you don't want injury and it seems like injury does provide opportunity to some players here um, with all those hamstring, which is pretty bad, but uh, again, gives him an option in starting at left back here. And just to go over, you know, unfortunately they did lose one, nothing, but that's not to say Des didn't look bad or anything. He had a few mistakes there, Austin, where he kind of gave the ball away. I think it was, I want to say it was almost like a pretty pretty crucial giveaway kind of a counter there but they were able to snuff it out could have uh, led to a pretty big goal scoring chance but nonetheless he was combining really well attacking do what it does very well um, with the players and this talent that he has around him so once he passes the ball making those give and go runs things like that um, you can kind of see the chemistry building over time but I would say you know like a seven seven and a half out of ten for desk nothing you know pretty tidy and and slotted very well there but It'll be kind of interesting to see Barcelona is just in a very interesting time for their club right now. Um, you know, losing <laughs> yeah. the Getafe, the, they looked even more physical than you know the you know the one of the top clubs in, in history here, especially in the league, just dominating. So it was interesting to kind of see yeah. somebody run Barcelona, you know, to the ground here and, and you know stand firm, whether it was not possession, but just winning those 50-50 challenges and really battling them physically here. Yeah, yeah, that was really interesting to see. I think there was a, a video of Ansu Fadi getting tossed to the ground and not a single yeah. when a player came over to him. To, yeah, that was crazy. The guy just stood right over him. Yeah, and that's, you know, Barca's all about the Barca mentality. You know, it's more than a club. And, uh, yeah, to not see anyone run over to him was kind of kind of disappointing. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it looked like Dust had some some good moments. Um you know, with, with some bad moments, but at the same time, uh, you know, he's getting that chemistry. He's, he's, he's combining with players. Uh, he had a nice, you know, I, I guess it was a nice pass to Messi who, who had a shot that almost went in. So it was, I guess, an almost an assist, but uh, that was cool to see, you know? So yeah, I, I think Pat, you know, talking about the last two players with, with champions league Barcelona yeah. as well um, against the team from, from Hungary uh, and it looks like, you know, Jordi Alba is still going to be out for a few more weeks. So, you know, is it safe to say that that Serginho is is in the starting lineup for their uh, Champions League game? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that. Um, you know, I think he has to play a pretty crucial role here. And Barcelona didn't sign him for that uh, you know price tag for, for no reason here. And unfor- again, unfortunate with the injury, but you can slot him at left back, right back. He's very versatile and he's going to be, you know, much needed, you know, in this campaign for Champions League. And La Liga, as you know, this is this is Messi's kind of, I guess, swan song with I mean, the historic club here for, the, for this year. Yeah. It, it very well could be. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I, I think uh, Austin, there are they playing um, the Hungarian team, I believe. Yeah, and it's going to be in Spain too, so okay. um, they don't have to travel or anything like that. So, yeah, I, I think. Dust is a, is you know a safe bet to start for tomorrow, so um, that'll definitely be one game I'm going to keep my eye on and see if I can catch at least a little bit of it. But uh, yeah, right, working from home times, but you know maybe it's a little 15 minute break. Just just check it out because all the action of Champions League unfortunately falls on Tuesdays. But yeah, I know it's it's uh, well, it's better than it was. I, I could definitely yeah, say that you can at least put a TV on and and not get a. Uh, 
you know, called out for it <laughs> at the office. So yeah, with, with that being said, we're going to move back to Germany and talk about Josh Sargent. So, or sorry, excuse me, Tyler Adams. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Pat. A lot of Boone Americans. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about Tyler first. So Tyler started and played 90 minutes for Leipzig uh, in their 2-0 win over Augsburg. And it was, again, similar to Gio, uh, but I would say even a step above Gio's performance. Uh, but just a very professional performance from, from Tyler. Um, had some some really good moments. Again, started as a six in uh, Leipzig's midfield. Was interesting to see he also got paired with Benjamin Heinrichs, who is a outside yeah. and was thrown into the midfield kind of next to Tyler. But Tyler still played a little further back than him. And uh, yeah, they, they did a good job kind of combining uh, in defense. And um, again, Tyler running the show on offense. He's really becoming that that general or that quarterback, like Julian Nagelsmann said earlier in the season, uh, dictating the beginning of possession for, for this Leipzig team and, and kind of starting plays off. So I thought that was good. You know, he had some good runs up the field too in this game, which I really want to see more of just personally. I don't know if that's necessarily his role in this team, but I, I like him taking the ball up the field and, um, you know, combining with players in, in one, one, two situations and things like that to, to, uh, you know, just advance, get up field more and just kind of get involved in the offensive play a little bit. Uh, and then he also had a few good passes in this game. There was one really nice pass. He played into the box that uh, I guess created a chance. It was um, kind of a, a shot that got snuffed out or, uh, you know, a situation that got snuffed out either by the goalkeeper or defender. But um, yeah, that was really nice too. So all in all, it was a good game from Tyler. Um, you know, he's really, I guess getting confident um, starting each and every game, similar to, to what happened, um, you know, before this injury last year, um, it looked like he was really the lock starter in midfield for Leipzig. Um, and it looks like he's kind of back to that, that role. I know Conrad Lamer is still out, but um, you know, I, I think Julian Nagelsmann really likes what he's getting from, from Tyler. And that, that really excites me, Pat. Yeah, I was just about to ask about Lamer too, and it's intriguing just to, you know, where we were talking, you know, the last season where he was kind of having, um, not not as extreme as McKinney, but just kind of shifting the outside back in the midfielder spots, but it's nice to see him at that that quarterback position and really just, you know, take to it and, you know, really dominating the games here and getting more comfortable, um, you know, especially at such a high level, and I believe they're in first now, right, Austin? You would be correct. Yeah, they're number one in the Bundesliga right now. So, uh, yeah, off to a good start. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting just the expectations, you know, with, with Adams too. And I, I think he's a player that, you know, just has a lot of, you know, a- ambition, you know, and, and with his team. I think somebody that can really captain, you know, and lead them to, to great things. And it'll be kind of curious to see, obviously, the firepower of Dortmund and, and uh, Bayern and, you know, all that the Bundesliga has. But, you know, where I guess the expectations are for, for Adams and this team. Is it maybe winning the DFB Pokal or, or, you know, finishing, you know, winning that, winning that league? Obviously, that's the goal for everybody. But I'm kind of wondering where they're at such an interesting place as a club. And I feel like Adams is really becoming his own and maybe can help elevate, th- elevate them here. Yeah, that is a great question, too, because taking a look at them in Champions League as well, they are in a group with PSG, Man United, and a team from Turkey, uh, Istanbul. So, oh, yeah. you know, that's that's a very tough, a tough group. <laughs> so I, I don't know, you know, especially coming so close to um, the final last year, coming to the semifinal against PSG, you know, do they try and take it to PSG and Man United and Champions League and make another run again? Or do they kind of just, you know, put that on the back burner this year since they did so well last year and, uh, kind of like you said, Pat, prioritize the Pokal and, and Bundesliga. I, I really don't know. I mean, they're off to a good start in, in Germany right now. So I guess we'll see how, how Champions League unfolds the next few weeks. Yeah, another player, um, you know, where he's involved in Champions League action. And it, you know, it doesn't <laughs> seem like, obviously, with Lamer being injured, but um, we will be kind of curious to see when, when he's kind of up and healthy, um, you know, what, what will kind of happen here. Um, will they kind of accommodate or? shift formations or, or, or what here yeah yeah i don't know how that's gonna go because i really liked conrad lamer um when when tyler was injured so it could just be uh you know what happened to tyler happens to him right tyler just replaces him and everyone's happy and 
you know, they continue to stay in first place in the Bundesliga, or like you said, they change formation and, and push Tyler back out, uh, you know, outside to the right wing back position again, which I would not be in favor of. So <laughs> yeah, you know, just to finish this off, Pat, I think, uh, Again, Tyler is another player like Serginio Dest that we're going to see this week, um, I think, start in, in their Champions League game. Um, they're, again, really thin at, at midfield. So, you know, there is some players that maybe they could throw in there. But I, I think just Tyler plays such a key role for them right now um, that we're going to see him again, Pat. What do you think? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, uh, yeah, I can't argue with that one. I don't have too much else to say, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, he's got great stamina too. You know, he's a he's a workhorse, Tyler. So that's what we need with the uh, with the uh, you know U.S. men's national team here, Austin, coming exactly, up. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, with that being said, we're gonna throw it uh, back to you, Pat, for a player that's making a move, a new yaw that we'll we'll follow hopefully in January. That's right, a new yaw, and that's uh, Brendan Aronson, Austin. So. Um, for, you know, officially headed to Europe, um, you know, from our, our Philadelphia Union, um, you know, who I was a you know, pretty big supporter um, for the inaugural season here and you know, moving forward. But again, it, it was nice to kind of see him really develop and take the strides there from the academy all the way up the homegrown route and really develop into a player that, you know, it has, you know, essentially set, I believe, the, uh, you know, the highest for a U.S. Uh, homegrown player, um, you know, the fee there. I think it's around six million plus was it the 3 million performance bonuses and, and self, uh, you know, yeah, self on the of union, something like that around there. So, yeah, I mean, again, um, you know, I think the move to Salzburg and, and with Jesse Marsh is really intriguing and exciting for a player of this caliber. Um, you know, a team that just has a lot of, you know, history developing players that, you know, we've mentioned too off camera where it's, uh, you know, my Liverpool guys, uh, Mane, Kaita, Holland, um, you know, I could, I'm sure you can name, you know, quite a few more here, but yeah, I think it's just a place where in, in the culture where, you know, Marsh is really created and, and just that philosophy that the club has to really bring in kind of these young players and talents and, and do really well domestically and then challenge for Champions League Europa, you know, you know, get involved there and get some game and then, you know, have these other players that are, you know, all over, you know, top clubs and, and top leagues around the world. So really interesting, uh, you know, club situation for Brendan. Yeah, I, I personally love this move. You know, uh, some people might have wanted to see him go to the the Bundesliga and 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 sign for a team there. Uh, but I think Salzburg is a perfect place for him right now. Um, you know, with Jesse Marsh, like you said, Pat, I think that will ease his transition overseas. And with this team, you know, they they're in Champions League right now. They're you know potentially will be there in January. Maybe they'll be in Europa League, but that'll be instant you know european um experience for brendan right away because i think he's going to be uh, a first team player from the start that's that's kind of the inclination that that salzburg has given with with the 11 number um that that they've given him so far so uh and i think he's good enough too but i, I think this move just you know is a home run honestly um you know right now they have a player dominic shabashlai who uh is kind of like a wide uh attacking playmaker and uh, he's probably going to move on either in January or next summer. So I think the thought here, Pat, is that, you know, Brendan comes in in January, gets some, some game time under his belt. And then, you know, next summer, summer, they really look to kind of replace Dominic with, with Brendan and, uh, you know, have him be that, that wide creator for them. Um, Cause we've seen him do that in MLS right now. Uh, that's, you know, something he's really good at that. And, kind of keeping possession in tight spaces and, um, you know, really doing a good job kind of uh, getting out of, of, of sticky situations and, and kind of creating for his teammates. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, Austin. And, and just, you know, from what we've, we've covered and seen some highlights and, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't watched you know too much of the union here um, with Aronson, but yeah, I mean, he, he just, yeah, like you just said, the, the sticky situations he gets out of and just that, you know, he's two or three steps ahead, um, you know, almost uh, you know, on that chessboard from his opponents and knows exactly what to do with the ball, where to go. And again, he'll kind of develop the consistency over time. And I think you brought up a really good point off, off camera. And he kind of has, I want to say, like outgrown, um, you know, where he is now, like, like you pointed out there. Um, just a player that, 
you know, seems to really, you know, he just needs to be challenged at the next level and is going to continue to develop. And I know there's been some crazy comparisons to the American Havertz, and I'm not sure I'm there <laughs> to agree with that yet. But um, I think the point that you brought up is interesting. That he's, he's kind of outgrown the league and is ready to kind of move on here. Yeah, and it's not to say that uh, he's consistently game in, game out, the best player on the field. But, it, you know, there's definitely moments where he is the best player on the field. And um, he has games where he, you know, is someone that, you know, maybe he's not scoring goals or providing assists, but his just play is so crisp. Um, you know, he's he's keeping possession. He's, he's you know, making great passes, um, reading the game really well. And, you know, I think when looking at another player from MLS that moved abroad and Tyler Adams, you know, Tyler Adams is another player who uh, kind of got very comfortable on that, that Red Bulls team, you know, wasn't always great every single game. You know, we like to think that in retrospect, um, but, you know, definitely was one of the best players um, in the league. Like I think Aronson is right now, but when he went to Leipzig, it just seemed like his game kind of took an immediate step up. Um, and I think that's just from training with players at a higher level, um, you know, in training sessions, challenging himself to do things more and more and not kind of settling for, um, you know, the, the level of play that, uh, MLS is, you know, it's just, it's not the same type of pressure. It's not the same type of pace and tenacity um, that he's going to see in Salzburg. So I'm just excited to see him kind of get in that environment. Uh, Jesse Marsh does a great job from, from what we hear and what we've seen. And yeah, I just want to see him challenged more and kind of uh, become, you know, more, more comfortable um, or, or maybe even more uncomfortable. I want to see him kind of push himself harder than, um, it seems like he he's he's doing right now in in Philadelphia because I think um, he's just reached that that kind of that ceiling pat where um, he's 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 done it like he's he's gotten the notoriety you know now his his goal is to definitely win MLS Cup with the Union um, and we'll see if it happens but I, I think at the end of the season he's gonna you know look back on his time in MLS and, and feel like you know he he did a lot of really good things and it's time for kind of a new challenge so to speak right. Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better, Austin. Yeah, he's uh, you know, ready ready to go for this new challenge. And yeah, I just think he's he's the type of player I'm going to be tuning in as much as I can to the Austrian Bundesliga. Maybe we'll see a yeah you know, an EPP <laughs> match up there um, down down the road. But yeah, I mean, he just just to add to the the national team attack, and you know, he was involved in that 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 past January camp, um, and then yeah. in, at Costa Rica games. So. I think his ceiling, his his future is, you know, I know we say it all the time, and it's, uh, you know, kind of, uh, um, you know, the the words, the phrases skipping my mind, but the future is is pretty bright here, um, you know, for Aronson, and I just think he has so much to to learn and develop, and a player that is so technically gifted that can can really thrive in Europe, and depend, especially with this situation, I'm in the club where, like you said, I'm kind of coming in for. Um, you know, obviously get that experience and, and, and right in that first team right away, but in terms of starting, kind of getting some minutes and then maybe, you know, as players move on and transfer, he kind of, you know, takes the reins over and, and really kind of, you know, takes that next step because he, he's such a young player. I believe he's turning 20 soon. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're just, uh, you know, hoping maybe he can bring some magic to the union and, and can continue that over to Europe. Yeah, I, I think... Yeah, there, there's really nothing else to be said. So we're excited for it. You know, January can't come soon enough, especially get over uh, this year of 2020, get yep. it as, <laughs> blood, uh, as quick as possible. So, yeah, now let's uh, move on to Josh Sargent. Finally, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Josh Sargent here. I know I got ahead of myself a little bit earlier, but Josh started and played 90 minutes uh, in, in Bremen's 1-1 draw with Freiburg. And Pat, it was really another scrappy performance from Josh. Um, you know, Josh is really starting to become um, a player that that commits himself uh, defensively and also commits himself uh, in his holdup play. And uh, you know, he did a lot of the same of that in this game. Um, you know, he did have a chance. Uh, I forget exactly what minute it was it, it was in the game, but he did have a chance to score um, that got blocked. And then off the rebound, he did a great job setting up. Um, a teammate for a shot that also got blocked, but it was a really good chance, um, especially off that rebound. So I thought that was bright. Um, the one thing that was a little sloppy in this game, you know, he, he 
does a good job in his hold of play uh, generally, but I did think at times, um, you know, he had a few bad passes or, or rebounds, basically some loose touches um, from, from passes that he received. So I thought that was something he could have did a little bit better of a job of in this game. But I, I just, I still like what Josh is doing, you know, even though he's not scoring goals, he's not necessarily, um, you know, providing uh, great moments in the box. I think all the work he's doing, um, you know, still up to the box um, is, is good to see and good progression. He's really, um, you know, comfortable with his touches and is, is forward in a lot of his, um, you know, dribbling sequences and, and just kind of the, the touches he has when he's in and around contact um, is, is bright in my opinion. So I, I know Pat, you said off camera, there was a player that you uh, was would yeah. kind of draw the comparison to, I know we don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much and also, uh, you know, make it a, a lock comparison, but you want to kind of talk about that real quick? Yeah. And, and just, you know, the way that you were kind of describing and, and what we've been talking about, Josh is, Josh's game and how it's developed into a player that kind of, you know, can come back and receive the ball, track back and, and really put pressure on, um, you know, unfortunately with a team that really struggled, I would say last year. And then honestly is, is not off to a, a terrible start right now. I think they're, um, I want to say that the middle um, part of the table here, it's early. Yeah, um, they're getting points somehow. somehow. Yeah, getting points. Just what they weren't doing last year. So fair play to them, I guess. I think I was looking it up too. And I think there's, they're in seventh. Um, yeah. Hi there. So that's you know crazy, crazy, man. crazy. But but nonetheless, the comparison that you know, I wanted to bring up here was um, you know it's early, but uh, Roberto Firmino, just in terms of the style and the way he plays. Um, you know, obviously, I watch a lot of Liverpool. I mean, you guys all know, but yeah, I, I just think the way that that you know Josh is like I mentioned, tracking back, you know, pressing all over the field, and then has kind of that creative, you know, holding up with the ball and and passing it through the flanks and the channels and making those darting runs to not only just, uh, you know, to try to receive the ball, but open up for other, other players and, and opportunities and kind of knows, you know, where, where to make those kind of creative bending runs and, and pull some defenders away and, and open up some gaps and spaces there in the field, which, you know, that is exactly what Firmino does to accommodate, um, you know, that, you know, add to that trio with, with Sala and Mane, you know, always, you know, having the ball there. So he kind of does the, I guess you could say the dirty work doesn't get as many goals and assists output, um, you know, does have that in, in his arsenal, but, um, you know, certainly kind of want to draw again, just, just in terms of the style, it's very early, but that comparison. Yeah. And it's a, an interesting comparison too, because we really think of Josh as a goal scorer, but, you know, recently at Bremen, he's been everything that, that Roberto Firmino does, um, albeit maybe a little less mobile, but uh, yeah, it, I think it's an interesting comparison. You know, I think if, if Josh could ever reach the uh, the level that uh, Roberto Firmino plays at, then it will, <laughs> will be a business. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting when you said it to be off camera. So uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we'll we'll kind of keep an eye on that. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to finish it up saying that you know the thing we we wanted to see from Josh uh, last year at certain points uh, was you know he looked a little dejected at times, especially earlier in the season last year, and. Uh, you know, at, at times in games, looks like he might have checked out. Um, so I, I thought it, you know, it's just good to reaffirm that we're seeing him really mentally grind right now. Um, and, and you know, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a step up from last year. And now he just needs to continue to build off that and uh, get ruthless in the box, I said. So maybe take a, a book or a, a page out of Erling Holland's book and uh, get that ruthless mentality when uh, going towards goal and kind of uh, – you know, look to, to finish plays off and, and, and finally get on the score sheet. So that's all for, for Josh today. I think we got two more players we want to talk about real quick, Pat. And uh, who are they? That's right. And, um, you know, some, some defenders here in center back. And I guess we'll start with uh, Cameron Carter Vickers, Austin. So he actually had, a, you know, a season long loan here um, to Bournemouth, um, you know, down in the, uh, you know, cha English championship here. So, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, a pretty intriguing move, um, you know, for Cameron. Um, obviously, he's been, you know, loaned all all over um, that we've seen in the past uh, from Tottenham there. But, yeah, I think it's just intriguing in terms of, um, you know, where obviously it's early, but it really looks like Bournemouth is making that push. Um, you know, they're in third right now. They haven't really let up a lot of goals, uh, clean sheet recently. And, yeah, they look they look pretty strong and poised to, especially during this COVID time and the, 
financial implications of of not being able to get get back up to the prem, um, you know, being pretty important. So I want to bring that up. And then just in terms of, uh, you know, getting into the lineup there, it won't be an easy cakewalk in terms of, you know, who they have here. I think I had some players listed here, um, you know, Steve Cook, um, you know, Jack Simpson, and then even uh, Chris, uh, what is it, Memphem? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the well, yeah, Welsh defender there, and he's a young guy, and they're they're really high on him. But he has had some you know, unfortunate knee surgeries and, and operations there in the past, and um, but nonetheless, um, you know, he, he's been playing um, you know fairly well here and getting you know getting back fully recovered, and it'll be kind of interesting to see how CCV fits in the lineup there, Austin. Yeah, I think it's a good move. You know, Bournemouth just got relegated last season. The one thing that concerns me a little bit is their financial troubles, but. Uh, that might mean, you know, they won't be able to bring in any other defenders and who knows, maybe they'll have to sell a defender too in, in the January window. So, yeah, yeah, and they're off to a strong start. So, yeah, I think I think it's it's not a bad move. I know we're we're trying to get him to finally stay at a club because this is, what now, his sixth or his seventh loan move? Yeah, he's he's up there. He's part of the loan army. Yeah, yeah, the, the Spurs loan army. So... Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a, a fine move. Yeah, and I guess uh, kind of again, staying on the loan army topic here, but but part of Chelsea's loan army, um, that's Matt Miazga, you know, the other center back here. So he has a season long loan over to Anderlecht in, in Belgium, you know, uh, one of the top teams there, and actually cemented right into the starting lineup and played the full ninety. And I think it was a two two draw there. So again, overall, Anderlecht, honestly, in the recent years, has not been kind of where they really want to be as kind of that you know top team that's won however many titles between them and, and Bruges I mean, you know kind of both uh, Ghent and, and you know Gank have come in there now and you know caused some disruption but nonetheless they're, they're still a top tier team and it's great to see Miazga get consistent minutes here it looks like right away and, and for the foreseeable future but yeah I mean um, just just another player where you know I hope I, I'm hoping I don't know the contract situation but you know even if you were at you know, a long-term and Anderlecht, um, you know, for a few years and then kind of pushed on, um, you know, to back to a top four league. I think that kind of needs to be the expectation, but just a tough scenario with the lone army, Austin. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it is what it is. We've kind of come to expect it at this point. Uh, at least, you know, he's in a, 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 a decent spot, you know, Anderlecht's a, a pretty good team and Vincent company is a very good coach. So that's right. Yeah, you know, he's a legend, a Man City legend. So definitely not the worst person to learn from. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it's a fine move for Matt. You know, it's a different move than the championship, which were was his last. Right, move. Reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Reading twice. So yeah. and we know how the not situation went. The Oof. not situation did not go well. So uh, I think it'll be interesting to see him get away from, from England again and kind of uh, get into a different culture and different environment, um, and hoping for the best. Yeah, I think uh, that's really all you can say, Austin. I mean, that scenario for for these players, just just getting some consistency, um, I think is key. I'm um, especially moving forward as they're kind of at that age where you know, right? And I know CCV is a little bit younger, but it's right in that age where you know, just some consistency at a club to develop and you know, hone their craft is really important. So um, I think that's that's really all for uh, today's episode. So let's uh, head on over to quick kicks. All right, everybody, all you Yah viewers. I think you know what time it is. And I think Austin knows what time it is at this point. We've been doing it for, for too long now. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. none other than Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. And that one is in. Josie Altidore from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. So the first player we'll start quick kicks with today is Weston McKinney. So unfortunately, we want to just let you guys know that Weston tested positive for COVID um, about a week ago at this point. So uh, still in good health from what we hear. And, uh, you know, if everything goes well, we'll be back available for Juventus in, uh, should, should I say, Pat, Juventus. Uh, uh, that's right. <laughs> in, uh, in about another week. So yeah, wishing him uh, a safe recovery, and uh, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know about that. Yeah, tough time. You've seen a lot of players, you know, getting it unfortunately, but you know, hopefully for speed recovery. Um, and moving on to the, uh, you know, Premier League, I almost said Championship here, uh, Austin, um, <laughs> with Anthony Robinson 
and Fulham starting the uh, you know full 90 there in a 1-1 draw against Sheffield United. So nice to see him and even uh, fellow Yad Tim Ream playing a pretty solid game. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, if uh, Tim Ream fits under the category of Yah anymore. Not a Yah. <laughs> old Yah. Uh, yeah. Old American. <laughs> yeah, an Oa. An Oa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we want to move over now to Denmark and talk about Emmanuel Sabi. So Emmanuel Sabi started and scored in Odense Bold Clubs uh, through one loss to Michelin. So good to see Sabi back on the score sheet. Um, it's been a pretty regular occurrence for him to start life at Odense. So uh, good to see. Yeah, especially against a club like that in the league. So that's great. And yeah. uh, moving on to you know France, uh, France's League Two here um, for Khan uh, and Nick Giacchini started the match and played the full ninety and a three nothing loss, unfortunately. But again, nice to see him picking up more minutes. Yeah, and had a really interesting bicycle kick attempt. Oh, that would have been awesome. Uh, so yeah, and then moving to Germany, we have Kobe Hernandez Foster, who started and played ninety minutes in Wolfsburg U 19s two uh, 0 loss. So good to see Kobe uh, getting more time over in Germany. Awesome. And, and one of our, our boys here, um, the original, uh, Andrea Novakovic, Austin, uh, subbed on in the 58th minute um, of Frosinone's 1-0 home win in Serie B. So nice to see him get a, a cameo there. That's right. That's our, our OG boy. And uh, going uh, over to Belgium, we have Chris Durkin, who subbed on and played the final 28 minutes in St. Truden's, uh, I guess, disappointing 6-3 loss. So uh, definitely a lot of action in that game. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> A lot of goals. <laughs> yeah. Um, and heading to you know, England's League One here, Indiana Vasilev of Indy here, uh, started and played 88 minutes for uh, Burton Albion in their 1-1 draw against Bristol Rovers. So nice to see him kind of, you know, start getting some cameos and get get the start and kind of slowly transition here um, in, in League One. Yeah, good to see. And moving back to Denmark, we have Haji Wright, who started and scored a goal in uh, Sunder Jeski. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And they're big <laughs> two to win over Bronby. So, uh, you know, that's a big club over there in Denmark. So, you know, excited to see Haji scoring a lot of goals for his new team and, uh, yeah, getting a big win. That's the key, Austin. And uh, anyway, back to France here with uh, Kyle Avre, um started and scored another goal in a, in a two true, uh, excuse me, 2 2 draw for the U17s in Leo. Um, but it's been uh, four goals and five assists in the last. Uh, you know, six games now for, for Kyle. So, you know, keep, keep going there. That's right. And uh, looking back or going over to, to the Netherlands, excuse me, we have Alex Mendez. So on Friday, Alex Mendez had an assist in young Ajax's three, two win. And then unfortunately on Monday uh, had to pull out of the game with a leg injury um, in the 18th minute. So we still don't know the diagnosis of that injury, but uh, we'll try and keep you guys updated on social. That's tough, Austin. But uh, some some good news here for for a transfer here. An American striker, uh, our boy Charlie Kelman, That's right. uh, signed uh, you know three year contract for undisclosed fee to uh, Queens Park Rangers. So moving on up um, from South End into the English Championship. So all the best there for Charlie. Yeah, exciting move. Excited to see what happens with them. And uh, speaking of excitement, we have Jonathan Amon back in our quick kick segment. Uh, started and played the full 90 minutes uh, for Norchland and scored in their 1-0 win. So this was his first goal after being out for 13 months uh, with an injury or with multiple injuries. So really good to see him back on the pitch and scoring scoring goals again. So, awesome. Yeah. And now we want to go over to our Young Yaws segment. And we got two for today, Pat. And the first is Carver Miller, who's a 16-year-old goalkeeper uh, for Arminia Bielefeld. And, and he plays for their U17 team currently uh, and recently made the move over from DC United's academy. So uh, exciting to see, you know, another American over there in Germany. Nice. And, and uh, talking about a keeper here too, uh, Aaron Cervantes um, is heading to Rangers from Orange County SC. So he came there as a 15-year-old and, uh, you know, was there for a few years. And now the 18-year-old is heading over to Scotland. So another Scottish Yankee there, Austin. Yes, uh, there go. And that's all for our show today, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And don't forget to check out our awesome social media platforms. We got Twitter, uh, Instagram, you know, all that. And Instagram's getting close, uh, you know, so make sure to give us a follow there and, you know, keep playing the content as, uh, you know, uh, my partner, Austin, I want to give a lot of credit to, has been really, really killing it and providing some great content there. Yeah, we're almost to double digits on Instagram, which is really cool. So uh, 
Yeah, thanks for the support, guys. You know, that's something we uh, you know, really try and take pride in getting information out as quick as we, we hear it or see it and, um, you know, give credit to the people who do it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. And also, you know, find us on uh, your podcast apps, too. So we're on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts at the moment. So definitely check us out there, subscribe to us, and, and leave us a review. Absolutely. And uh, Austin, I guess just in terms of, you know, we have Aronson now, Salzburg, we've had even Destoran at Barcelona, you know, all the big players that we're covering, and it's just more and more Yaz uh, infiltrating here. Um, you know, Christian back, I think, uh, you know, even with uh, some news here, um, you know, about you know some of the qualifiers maybe uh, upcoming here, I think it's all uh, shaping up to, for the national team and for the Yaz here, um, you know, to get over this 2020 and and, you know, really push forward for that one goal. Yeah, Pat, we're definitely in the glow up phase. So <laughs> right in the heart of that. And it all leads to one day winning that World Cup.